We may know Lindsay Lohan best for her acting roles, but her musical career is seriously underrated. She began singing for movie soundtracks, with songs such as Ultimate from Freaky Friday, I Decide from The Princess Diaries 2, and Drama Queen from Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, all of which are bops, by the way. Her work on Freaky Friday was especially instrumental for her musical career, as she had to learn how to play guitar and sing for her role. Having dipped her toe into the music industry, Lindsay decided to go all in and release a whole album. Work began in 2004, as she collaborated with legendary songwriter Diane Warren and producer Randy Jackson, though she'd end up not using any material from these sessions, and instead worked with Cara Diaguardi and John Shanks, who wrote and produced a majority of the album. She also collaborated with Dark Child for a song called Extraordinary, though this didn't end up making the cut either. The song was recorded, and I wish one day it'll leak. A Dark Child and Lindsay collab sounds way too good to go unreleased. When asked about the album, Lindsay said she wanted it to be a mix of rock and club tracks, with songs that you could scream and cry to when you're depressed, and songs to listen to with your girls before going out. She basically covered my entire taste in music with that description. How nice of her to make a record specifically for me. The album's lead single, Rumors, was released in September 2004 and achieved some success. It wasn't the biggest hit, but it definitely made an impact due to how huge her star power was at the time. The song is an angsty rock and dance pop track about how Lindsay's fed up with the invasive paparazzi and how she just wants to live her life without constant media speculation. The dramatic, string, and guitar-heavy production gives it an unnerving and frenzied atmosphere, which fits in with the theme of Lindsay feeling tired and angry at the media. She may not be the best singer, but she still gives a great performance, as she sounds genuinely pissed. Rumors works not just as a great song in and of itself, but also as a look into her mindset at the time. This was the perfect single to lead off with, since it addressed Lindsay's constant presence in the tabloids and also established the sound she'd be taking on in her music. The album, titled Speak, dropped in December 2004, debuting at number 4 on the Billboard 200, with over 260,000 copies sold. Critical reception was mixed, but better than expected considering how cool it was to needlessly bash Lindsay at the time. The main critique it seemed to have gotten was that it was somewhat unoriginal, sounding like something Ashley Simpson or Hilary Duff could have sang. I do agree with this, but I'm sorry, saying something sounds like Ashley Simpson or Hilary Duff is a very high compliment in my mind. Speak certainly is a product of its time, having the teen pop rock sound made popular by artists such as Avril Lavigne and Kelly Clarkson, but I think Lindsay sells it very well. There's a passion behind her voice that you can hear through her expressive performance, and it makes the album entirely hers. She shines on rock-heavy tracks like Nobody Till You, Anything But Me, and Magnet, but my personal favorites are actually some of the slower songs. Symptoms of You is a piano-driven power ballad with a scream-along rock chorus, and it's a joy to sing along with. The hook is simple and memorable, and definitely one of the stickiest on the album. Very Last Moment in Time is a similar track, being an acoustic-y rock song that sees her singing about her man and how he makes her want to let her guard down and live like it's the last moment in time. This is, again, a really great song to scream along with if you're in your feelings, though my go-to song for that purpose is something I never had. This song is about Lindsay hoping for a relationship, but ultimately knowing the person she's in love with doesn't feel the same. I am telling you, if I'm in a crying mood, this song really hits. Something about the mid-2000s pop rock sound just suits a broken-hearted song like this so well. The same goes for Over, which was the second single. The song's about her breakup with Wilmer Valderrama, and apparently she wrote it one day after they broke up and sang it while they were still living together. That must have been fun for him to listen to. You could definitely hear the heartbreak in her voice as she pleads with him to tell her it's over if he doesn't want to stay, despite her intense love for him. Over is wonderfully dramatic, and even though I feel bad saying her breakup was a good thing since it gave us this song, I'm not not saying that. The song was another decent hit, topping the Billboard chart. Well, the Bubbling Under chart, but still, it was number one somewhere. Now, despite all the tearjerkers, Lindsay did want to incorporate some fun, upbeat tracks as well. To Know Your Name specifically is a more electronic, club-ready track. It sticks out a little for not being as rock-infused as the other songs, but I give it a pass for that because it's such a bop. 
This was definitely the type of song she was talking about when she said she wanted something you listen to before you go out. It sounds like something from Holly Valance's State of Mind or Rachel Stevens's Come and Get It, since those albums had a similar electronic sound. The last single, ironically titled First, is another upbeat moment, though this one totally embodies the pop rock sound of Speak. It was actually chosen as a single to promote Herbie Fully Loaded, which Lindsay was starring in. I never watched it, but going off the endless trailers that were on all the time, I feel like First fits that movie's vibe very well. It's another scream along pop rock song, similar to the work of Ashley Simpson from this time, and while I don't think it's among the best on the album, it's still wicked fun. I do think the title track would have made for a better single though. That song is just as catchy, but there's a bit more edge to it that makes it work better as a reflection of the album. It was meant to be the third single, with the video directed by Francis Lawrence being planned, but got replaced due to first being used to promote Herbie. Some remixes were made, but never released. Considering how it's been almost 20 years, can someone just leak them already? An electronic mix would absolutely go off. In fact, a whole remix speak album would be a great way to celebrate the 20th anniversary. If they take this idea from me, I better receive royalties. Overall, Speak is a very solid record that you're bound to love if you miss this era of music. It sounds extremely of its time, but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Just because it's not the most original album doesn't take away from its quality, and I definitely think Lindsay managed to hold her own with the other pop rock acts of the time. If you want a dose of some mid-2000s nostalgia, you can't go wrong with Speak. Katy Heron really did that. It's Katie. Oh my god, that's me.